folks, Steve here, and what we got going on right now is I am heading to a place called Wayne Calvert Machine Shop. This is a machine shop located in Denton, Texas, not far from where we run our operation, and I use them for work-related stuff somewhat frequently. They do all my machining work for customer vehicles, and they do a good job there. I like them a lot. What I had them do was bore the 2JZ cylinders over half a millimeter. They're going a half a millimeter larger on the bore and they hone the cylinder. I had them look at the cylinder head to see what they thought it, it needed, if it had any kind of issues or like damage that we need to worry about. Basically came back all clear. They did suggest doing a valve job, but I just told them to hold off on that because I don't, I really can't afford to do more than we need to right now. But the head's not warped. It's good and straight. Um, I'll do a little uh, just simple water test on the valves to make sure that they can hold water in the cylinder. Well, here she is, home at last. Cylinder's looking beautiful. Uh, the top is already good. We didn't have them do anything else to it. Just give us half a millimeter on the bore. Got some new pistons in the truck. Got all kinds of things here for it. All kinds of seals, Toyota, World Pack, Felpro, bearings, just all kinds of stuff for this girl. So we're gonna be putting all that crap back in it this week and uh, hopefully everything goes nice and smooth if we can get so we need to get the engine mostly assembled and then start making the wiring harness and i've got everything here to do that also so ideally we get the motor built this weekend get the harness almost completely done and on the engine so we can just drop the engine in and then we'll have to do a little bit more wiring in the car but that shouldn't be no big deal now the tjs have a bunch of little seals like these are for the oil pump this is for where the water pump like assembly goes or the coolant assembly, if you will. And then it's got another one right here for the oil pickup. And so I had to source all those little seals and I got them all here. Some of them came from Toyota. Uh, new front main seal, rear main seal, uh, oil filter adapter seal for here. So yeah, so we got everything we need to get this deal done. And the cylinder head, I didn't have them do anything to that either, except just check it out for any like severe damage. But I did have them actually clean it. So she's nice and shiny. And they also checked to see if there was any warpage or uh, excessive uh, run out. And everything looks good there. folks steve here and matt and uh welcome back to master machines in this episode we are going to be assembling our 2jz engine that we blew up a couple weeks ago tonight is the night baby so it's going down i've been collecting all kinds of parts so we just got the engine block and the cylinder head back from calvert's and everything looks great there they went uh, half a millimeter over i'm pretty sure i covered all that in the video where i picked it up but anyway um so in typical Master of Machines fashion, we went super cheap on the pistons. I know some of, of you guys course. are going to be pretty disappointed to hear that we're not going fours internals, but we're still broke. And honestly, <laughs> blowing the engine was about a $700 setback for those who are wondering. We had everything perfect. It was built with GTE pistons and everything. And it was great. Then we made a mistake and it cost us $700. Yeah. And to be fair, if we would have put forged internals in this, that would have been closer to two grand that it would have cost us. Yeah, so. definitely. 1800 bucks yeah. for rods and pistons, for sure. Um, unless we went like with some cheap Russian crap, which then we'd kind of be in the same boat. Yeah, what, what would be the point, right? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the pistons we do have, uh, Matt's got right here. It is a D, what's the brand? DNJ. 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 It's like a aftermarket stock replacement. But they look pretty good. They're nice they and shiny. They look real good, yeah. A little coated skirt. Uh, full floating wrist pin and uh, you know everything looks pretty good with them and for cheap pistons they look like they're gonna work great and then we have the gte rod still that was in the engine previously Classic. we don't believe there was any damage done to them cylinder head looks pretty good um i do want to show you guys the combustion chamber as it looks right now and as we are going to be sending it so there was some damage from when the event happened slide that out. don't drop one of those be careful and uh, i'll show you kind of what we did about that and where we're at now you can see it's still kind of like pitted 
but it's smooth now. And basically I just went in there with like an abrasive disc and smooth it out. I thought about getting my arc welder and just trying to just barely puddle it smooth, but I'm really worried about that because it's the damage goes really close to the valves and also the deck surface. And the guys at Calvert's told us they don't think it's going to be a big yeah, deal. Yeah, they didn't seem too concerned about it. This is definitely not a new thing for us. No, this is not the dojo of while you're in there <laughs> or buy once, cry once. No, we yeah. do not live by those rules here. We are building, this car is going to be so cheap. And I'm kind of withholding some of the cheapness of what we're doing because I plan to make a video about just how hilariously inexpensive <laughs> the parts are that we use. But I want to prove that it works first. Yeah, for sure. I, I think we had a good combination um, with the GTE pistons before. I think the engine would have been great. We never would have had trouble with it. Yeah. But we made a, a huge tuning error and, and we tore up all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> we're moving past that. So now we're assembling the block. I did hit the block with some gold paint. Classic. Because we all know at Master Machines, we know that Amen. gold is the color of speed and performance. Yeah, we're all about the gold here because gold is for winners. Number That's one. Right. And so the block's looking good. So anyway, we're going to just press forward, get some uh, footage of oh, assembling yeah. this bad boy. And uh, we'll just uh, see how much we can get done tonight. We really need to get it all built. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely going to get the motor put back together tonight. Hopefully, we'll even have a little time to do some wiring harness stuff. Yes, we are putting a custom yes. handmade harness in the Lexus, and it's going to be... Yeah, guys, this engine bay is going to look so much cleaner by the time that we're done with all this. It's going to be awesome. It's yeah. going to look really good. Anyone following the build is going to be satisfied that we blew the engine up and then went back <laughs> and did everything better the second time. Anybody who's followed the Z or this build is going to be amazed at how much cleaner this whole setup is going to be than anything we've done in the it's past. It's going to be totally unlike yeah. us. side of the micro squirt harness all done with our bulkhead connection that's going to connect to the engine harness um so what i got i got the micro squirt located in the car it does need to be out of the engine bay and uh the way i've done that is through this little hole you'll see down here in the firewall now i i'm pretty confident that that is where the master cylinder would be in a stick shift car so i had to drill that hole with a hole saw 
um, to actually put it there, but there was like a little pad that filled this and it just like, it's like perforated. So you just rip it out and it exposes the sheet metal. You drill a hole through it. And then on the inside, it's the same thing up here. There's like a perforated part in the padding. So you can rip that padding off and it just comes right through. The module is going to be in the car. And so now what I'm going to be doing is just taking each wire that we're going to need to go to the engine and putting it in one of our bulkhead connectors so that probably somewhere around this region we'll, we'll have those located so that we can plug the engine in there. So we're going to start working on that harness right now. Matt's in the back working on tidying up the cylinder head. We got some, some engine valves that are leaking. So he's going to get us access to the uh, valves in the head so that we can lap the valves, try to clean them up. Uh, the main machine shop told me that there was some valves leaking, but they wanted like 250 bucks to, to clean them up. And I think that's something that we can tackle here in house. So we're going to take care of that tonight also. All these wires are the ones that need to go to the engine off of the mega square harness. So all the other ones I just laid aside, those are the ones that are going to go elsewhere. Just the ones going to the engine from the mega square harness are right here. And so this is pretty basic stuff here. I just kind of put a zip tie to keep it all together, trim these short because all they need to do is really go like right around here somewhere. And uh, I'm just crimping on the male terminals. This is um, kind of like a, a, a pin diagram that I made just real quick while I was working on the engine harness. Um, it's got the two connectors, the way that I decided to number their pins, and then everything kind of itemized here with the wire color. So I'm just kind of going down the list, looking at everything the engine's gonna need and what type of terminal I should put on it. So these are getting males because the other side is of course a female terminal. And so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time explaining this stuff, it's pretty simple. I got a bunch of female terminals, I got a bunch of male terminals. This is just like a, a bulk, bulkhead connector set that I got off eBay. They're dirt cheap, or maybe it was Amazon actually. But they're dirt cheap, they just snap together like that. And it's got like a little seal on the inside. So it's gonna be pretty water resistant, but nothing too scientific here. Just some crappy connectors that I got for dirt cheap. And it came with all these terminals and stuff. And then I already had these crimping pliers. And so I'm just kind of bite onto it in there. Grab a wire. I like to put a little twist on them to kind of keep them tight. Let me see if I can the other side. We're gonna crimp, and that's what you end up with. Give it a little tug test, and that's good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and just knock out the rest of these, and then I'll start uh, sliding them into the larger connector. And then I have to wire in the ignition control module, which is a whole another whole another activity. You start getting through these pretty quick. So the machine shop told us that we had some leaking valves in the cylinder head and did some uh, leak down testing of our own and found that number six, number five, and number one all have some leakage. I uh, wrote it all down here. So number one was mostly leaking out of the exhaust, number five mostly out of the exhaust, and number six was out of both. Uh, number five was 100% leakage. That is not good. So I've begun removing valves out of it. Super easy to pull these valve keepers out. I just got like this special O2 sensor socket that I use for like some Hondas and Mazdas that have like a weird shield around the O2 sensor and was easy to able to easily get the springs pulled out for number six. And I already kind of wire brushed these. I'll show you some dirty ones in a minute, but this is uh, just a light wire brushing to get like junk off. They were just carboned up all gross. And we're not doing anything too scientific here. Just got some of this uh, valve lapping compound. Comes with a coarse and a fine grade. And basically uh, what we're gonna do is just clean up the seats real good, get all any like foreign stuff off them or any oil, and then put a little bit of that stuff on there and on the valve, pull the valve through. And then uh, we're gonna just uh, use a, a piece of vacuum hose and a drill to get that thing spinning and get those seats nice and clean. So we got number six done, and now Matt's working on the exhaust valves on number five. Well, that looks great. All right, so Matt here has a one of the dirty valves. 
So that's how they look like coming out of the cylinder. This cylinder had 60% leakage, I think. Yeah. Just crud it up. And here's what they look like. Here's the finished product after lapping. Um, we gave it kind of a gentle wire brushing, but I didn't want to go too heavy on it. So you still see some carbon deposits and stuff. But the actual seat is nice and smooth. Everything went pretty nice and smooth. Um, had to do a little valve work, um, you know, but that's, you know, comes with territory of, of having a motor that we blew up, so. Yeah, it was a little cheaper to do it our way than to pay the machine shop. To Which do is it. always a little cheaper, and that's always the way we do it. <laughs> that's right. But, I mean, everything looks great. Everything's testing good. Everything's holding, you know, there are water tests that we did and everything, all the valves seem to be seating and, and, and holding tight, so. We did go with a slightly cooler plug for right now. Slightly cooler plug. I got uh, the engine harness done. Yep. And uh, dropped some pictures of that in here too. And I started wiring up the car, but there's still work to be done. Yeah. There. I mean, realistically, having come into this with, you know, what, six hours, seven hours to kind of get everything back together and, and ready to go, that's, I'm, you know, I feel good. Yeah. I'm confident about it. So next week we will be... Finishing the wire in the car and dropping the engine into the car. So I'll probably just have Matt working on putting the engine in the car while I try to finish up some wiring. We got most of it done. Everything that involves the engine is now wired up. So all the sensors, all the, uh, anything that is attached to the engine has been pretty much fully wired. Yeah, everything looks professional. All the similar. wires are hidden. Everything's, man, everything's gonna look really good. It's gonna be a totally different build than you guys saw before. Yeah. Total to get I think we have, to I think we have the engine in the car and the wiring done and everything next week and probably be driving it the following week. Which... Yeah, I mean, really the meat of everything that we have to do is done. Cool, well that's gonna do it for this week. Like and subscribe and we'll see you next week when the engine is starting up.